Veterans Day is a, a, a special day for all of us. We've, we've all had family or friends that uh, have uh, been in the military and fought for our freedom. And uh, this is a day where we can say thank you uh, to even those families who have had people lose their lives. Um, Veterans Day is, is uh, November 11th because that was the last day of World War I. And um, on this day, um, there's a color guard from combined uh, military services that execute a present, uh, present arms at the um, uh, unknown tomb at 11 o'clock. Uh, so it's a, a week where we ask our players to make sure that they reach out to people who are in the military or families who have people or who have lost people in the military and say thank you. That, that we can have the lives we have because we should do it every day. Um, but this is a day and a week where we can say thank you and, and reach out to all. And, and we ask our players to call and text and send pictures and, and, and make sure that, that people are honored uh, this week who uh, not only have fought, but are fighting. Uh, even though Veterans Day is for those who um, have finished uh, we also want to honor those who are competing and fighting uh, for our lives right now. So it's a, it's a special week for all of us. I'll wear this during the game um, in, in honor. We'll have a, a military at the game. We'll honor military at the game. Uh, and this will be our military appreciation game. Uh, by week, uh, by week, uh, it's unusual to have two in, in a two-week period. Um, but it, it was good for us, um, a, a team that's getting well a team that's doing more positive things, a team that's getting identity uh, as we finish the season. Uh, it was a team we said all along, we thought would build uh, to finish better than our other teams. We've played more people, we've got more depth. Uh, we had more adversity than we expected early in the season, so we had our, our bad games as well. Uh, but we feel like now that, uh, that this was good timing for us. We were able to work on Wake Forest, who has a very unique offense. Uh, we were able to work a lot of young guys. We were able to get well. A guy like Omarion, who carried the ball, um, 30, touched the ball 30-something times last week, had a week where he could not, um, he wouldn't be hit. Uh, he would just get fresh and stay in shape and, and uh, do the things that uh, uh, will help him be ready to go this week. Uh, we thought at the first of the year that Darwin Barlow would really take a load off of Omarion, and, and he hadn't stayed healthy just been really hard for him to stay on the field and you can see Saturday night or Saturday afternoon he's really uh, talented so he's a guy that we've really missed but we need to to, to get him back on the field uh, we were able to talk to all the players about um, are you going to red shirt in these last three games because they can play in the bowl game and it doesn't count but they can only play in four games so if a guy's got three games now or if he's already played in four games you talk to him about if you're just on kicking teams do you want to finish on those kicking teams or do you want to wait uh, like uh, Caleb Hood we're in a red shirt if we possibly can he's only played in two games so that would uh, give us a, a great back coming back next year um, if we don't have to have him to win a game here the next three weeks and then we could play him in the bowl game uh, if we needed to uh, we talked to guys who might possibly transfer because this time of the year you've got agents that are calling schools and looking around all over the place because we're getting calls from, from other teams. Uh, we talked to guys that might uh, go to the NFL early. <laughs> we talked to guys that might opt out of the bowl game. Uh, we gotta win another game to get to a bowl game, but we plan on doing that. Um, we looked at a depth chart for the bowl game with possible opt-outs because that's been harder. It's, it's hard to figure out who your team's gonna be, but we've played more people so we got more depth. So we feel like we'll be better prepared for a bowl than in our past. Uh, and then we looked at uh, portal thoughts who are we losing? Who, who do we have to replace immediately with some older guys? And then we looked at uh, depth chart possibilities for spring, because spring's different. Are you gonna have enough people to um, have a spring game uh, as you start looking at, at your spring depth charts? Uh, we also looked, uh, we had Pat go over all the revenue sharing thoughts, um, what that would mean with the possible 105 roster. Uh, we have to start looking at what that means in the spring. There is a portal in December, and then there's a portal after spring practice. So they kept two portals. Uh, last year, the portal after spring practice wasn't near as active 
uh, as the one in December, but the one in December is very active. Uh, so we've got to look at that. Signing date is much earlier this year. So you've, you've also got to look at uh, uh, your high school signees. So uh, we, we got a lot of good work done, but we got a lot of mental work done and, and a lot of talk with the, with the guys um, as well. Uh, we're coming off two really good performances uh, with this open date. Um, we found our identity. We executed much better and, and played better complimentary football uh, against Virginia and Florida State. We're one of five teams in Power Four that's averaging at least 200 yards rushing and 200 yards passing. Uh, that's only four uh, in the whole group, so we've been very, very balanced. I think we're 24th in the country offensively. Uh, yeah, so uh, we've done a good job of, of staying balanced. Uh, we've got 32 sacks on the season. That's tied for fourth nationally. Uh, we've had 17 in the last two games, which is phenomenal. And, and that's something that we've got to try to continue to do as we finish the season. It's the first time that UNC has had back -to -back, held back-to-back -back opponents to fewer than 300 yards on the road since 2007. And that was Virginia Tech and Wake Forest. And we've had a great week's practice preparing for Wake Forest. We've had some unbelievable games with Wake Forest since we've been back. They've come down to the end, just about every one of them. Um, and um, expect this one to be the, the same way on Saturday night. Uh, we've had very few penalties over the last two weeks. That's another thing that we've really cleaned up. So we've played uh, and coached very well uh, for the last two football games. And, and Virginia had a, a great win at, uh, uh, up at Pittsburgh uh, on Saturday night. Uh, people didn't expect. And, and then um, uh, Notre Dame jumped all over Florida State, uh, which Florida State struggled. And, and we know that. So. Offensively, we're rushed for 289 yards against Florida State, had zero turnovers. In fact, we've had zero turnovers for the last two weeks. Uh, Jacoby Criswell continues to get better. He's still got some room to grow. He had the one sack in, in the, the one minute drill before the half, but he's, he's making plays with his feet. He's not turning the ball over. He's uh, protecting the ball better. He hasn't had a fumble in a while as a quarterback. Uh, but I, I really like the decisions that he's making. He's, uh, he, he's gotten out of trouble with, uh, with his feet and thrown balls downfield. And, and we've had some contested catches that we're starting to catch. Uh, but he's, he's uh, really making some good decisions, which, which we really, really uh, appreciate with him. We were three for four on touchdowns in the red zone and, and had the one fourth and one that we didn't make. And that's twice this year we haven't made fourth and one, so we've got to continue to look at, at what's wrong there and what we need to do to, to improve. We did make a fourth and one uh, on the goal line later on uh, during the game for a touchdown. Defensively, we held Florida State to 42 yards rushing, seven sacks. Uh, we forced two uh, interceptions, and we had two others in our hands that we should have caught that we dropped, but we can't do that. We've got to improve in forcing turnovers uh, in the next three ball games. Um, um, and again, we held Florida State to their low at that time, which was 11 points. They gave, they only got three uh, this weekend against uh, Notre Dame. And we've had very few missed tackles the last two weeks. We're tackling much better in space. And it all starts with the dominance up front. Our defensive line's been dominant. They, they've been physical. Uh, they're um, stopping the run. They're forcing the quarterback to get the ball out of his hands faster, and that obviously helps your secondary. Um, and the same thing with the offensive line. When you can run the ball, everything else works. And we've said that for, uh, for five years, and, and here we are. And it, it does work when you can run the football better than the other team. Just everything else seems to fall into place. Special teams, we won again. Uh, we had a great return by Elijah Puzzy and, and uh, Nate McCollum. Uh, Nate's so close to going all the way. Covered units have been really good. They've been aggressive. And, and we're covering better than ever before. Most of those units are with young guys uh, that are, are earning their right to, to play more. And um, Tom ended up with a 41-yard average on three punts. So that, that's uh, much better in all those phases than we have before. Players of the game uh, were announced last week. Omar and Hampton, 172 yards rushing, four touchdowns, 93 yards receiving, and a touchdown, five touchdowns. He moved past Natron Means and Ethan Horton into seventh place in the UNC's all-time list. Uh, and all great backs get better in the fourth quarter. And he does that. He doesn't even seem tired. And when the defense gets tired, he doesn't. 
and, and that's the, the, the signature of the great backs that I've been around. He can run, he can catch, he protects the ball, he's a good pass protector, uh, but he doesn't get tired. And he wants to touch it every time he gets it. And the, the little shuffle pass that he had at the end of the game where he, he ran about 50 yards, he looked faster than everybody. Uh, so he didn't look like he was, he was tired at all. Uh, Bo Atkinson, five tackles, 3.5 sacks, and 4.5 tackles for loss. Uh, I think one of you asked me after the game, what about Bo? You know, we've, we've been so good on defense the last two weeks. There's so many people getting tackled. I don't sit there and count them. So you all knew he had that many. I had no clue that he had that many. Because a lot of times he's getting back there with Rucker and Dez, and they're all getting back there at the same time. So it was, it's really, really impressive uh, to have three and a half sacks. I mean, that's unbelievable for, for Bo. And, and uh, in fact, some of them are calling him Bo Sadkinson now. So that, that's, a, that's a good nickname for him as they, as they start looking at him moving forward. But really, really proud of Bo. Uh, Nate McCollum and Michael Short were the two special teams players of the week. Nate had the 49-yard kickoff return. He's so close to breaking one. And we haven't been very good in that area at, uh, the last few years, so I'm proud of him. And Michael Short, is, is, uh, he's playing more on the field, he's getting better, uh, but he's, he's been a, a, a tough guy with, with tackles on kickoff coverage and punt coverage. Uh, and he's the first one down. He and uh, um, Malcolm Ziegler raced to see who's the first one down on kickoff coverage. So really, really proud of Michael Short that he's improved so much. Um, and, and will continue to get to play more uh, because he and Caleb Ovalli are playing more now in the games than, than ever before. And, and we, we talked about having to get our depth and that's helped uh, Amari Campbell with some rest and, and he's playing really, really well over the last two weeks. Uh, Wake Forest is coached by Dave Clawson, who I really respect. He is a, a dear friend. Uh, he's in his 11th year at Wake Forest. He's done an amazing job through COVID and through all of the, the issues that have come up with college football the last few years of, of running our head coaches' meetings. They're all on Zoom. We, we usually have one uh, the first Wednesday uh, in every month in the off season. And he's been amazing at, at uh, taking on hard topics and, and you've got that many egos in a room that run their own building and, and run their own meetings. And, and uh, I'm really, uh, really impressed with Dave and how much he cares about the game and he's worked closely with the AFCA and he's helped us a lot in rule changes. So he's done an amazing job in those areas. His teams are always well coached. They do a great job recruiting. Um, they minimize their mistakes. They have very few penalties. They know who they are and what they want to do and they do it. Uh, I've always admired that so much about him. Uh, Damon Claiborne, has rushed for 824 yards and nine touchdowns. He is really good as a running back. He's one of the best running backs in the country. And um, he's, he's a guy that can beat you because he's quick, he's, he's fast, he's tough, he breaks tackles, he's got great hands. Uh, Hank Boschmeyer uh, has played well. Uh, he's got great weapons at wide receiver. They've always recruited so well at running back and wide receiver. And a lot of times it might not be somebody that everybody knows and heard of, but they can find them. And I've been impressed with them since I've been here. But um, Hank was uh, 20 and nine at Boise before he went to Louisiana Tech and, and then went to, uh, and then came to Wake. So uh, he knows what he's doing. He does a great job. Their defense is very sound. Uh, they play great red zone defense. They force a lot of turnovers. Nick Anderson leads their team and tackles with 94. And, and uh, we'll have our hands full this weekend. And, and it, it should be a fun game. It's uh, uh, a game that's uh, going to be a blue out, so we've asked everybody to wear Carolina blue. Uh, it'll be a night game, which will be fun on ACC Network. It is military appreciation game. Uh, you and fans will see uh, when you come to the stadium, uh, there's two logos of Ty Lee Strong on the field uh, that uh, uh, we're very, very proud of. Uh, there's some other acknowledging things. They will have uh, a sign over the exit to the stadium with uh, keep swinging, Tylee Strong on one side and keep swinging on the other. Uh, so Tylee's presence is, is still here. It's still with us and, and the guys talk about him uh, every day and his legacy and, and what he did for all of us. So, uh, did I miss anything? Thank you. Questions? Matt, uh, do you have now or have you had in all your tenure at UNC any veterans on your team? 
Hmm. It's a great question. I don't think so. We had Nate Boyer at, at uh, Texas, and, and Nate was a special forces guy. And you know, we do have um, Charlton Warren, who was ten years special forces with the Air Force, and and um, is is really an, an unbelievable man and dedicated his life. Air Force graduate, coached at Air Force, so uh, this will be a special week for him, and we'll have him involved. <coughs> In, in our motivation and preparation some this week as well. But I don't think we've had anybody involved in the military on our team since we've been here. Thank you. Tell me, you spent a lot of time with roster management in the, in the off week. Just, how many guys have said they're gonna, they want to red shirt? How many guys have indicated they want to transfer? After Jim, nobody has said anything about transferring. Now they might not tell us, right. you know, very honestly, but we, we feel like we're that's kind of the elephant in the room now, who's going to leave and who's coming back and how many are you going to have. And, and then you're adding to the, the proposal of 105 as a roster in the future. So what does that mean? And what about your walk-ons and who gets to stay and who has to leave and what do they do? Do you help them transfer in December if they have a place to go? Can walk-ons get in the portal and have a fair chance? Um, so more than anything else, that's where Pat Suttis' position as general manager, Chip, has become so important to us because we have to look at, we're losing a lot of defensive linemen. Um, we'll probably lose O'Mary. You, you would think he would go because he's going to be such a high draft choice. Uh, so you have to look at key positions and you, you need to fill those spots in December because you need them for spring practice. So. Um, it's interesting, and now we're even asking kids, if you're not going to play in the bowl game, we've got it, but we need to start winning some bowl games. So we're, we, need, we need to know now so we can prepare for you not to be in the game. Uh, and some of them may not tell us, but usually their, their agents are going to tell them not to play. Um, so that's what we just got to anticipate anyway. But the red shirt thing is um, we look at it, and if a guy's played four games, but if you've just been in on backup special teams, let's don't waste it. Let, let, don't put a guy in a game just to put him in to let him play. But if he, and we've told the kids, if your play is going to help us win one of the last three games, we're going to put you in. But we're not going to waste your time. And we probably will even have some guys on, on the sideline Saturday that during the game will take their helmets away. Because we've all had that awful story of somebody, some coach sending one in that he just got excited and he forgot he had four games already and he can't play one more. So you want to take the helmet away so when the coach grabs the kid, he can say, I don't have a helmet. So he, he won't put him in. So that was what last week was about. Is that a small number, redshirt? No, it's a big number. Really? I was surprised. A lot of your freshmen, if a freshman isn't on special teams or he's not Aiden Banfield or – Luke Masterson, and they've played in every game, then they've played two or three games. When you say you ask them, how much of it is you're saying you're going to redshirt and it's really not their decision as much? Uh, if they're not playing, it's easy. Yeah. What we don't want to do, and, and to be clear, is we don't want to play someone that would like to redshirt in a game where he's not going to change the outcome of the game. That's the biggest thing at the end here. Let's don't waste a young guy's year because he's going to be the third guy going down on a kickoff and you stick him in to be nice to him and let him play, uh, that, that's for the bowl game. We can let him play in the bowl game. And that's a great rule by the NCAA that you can play in the playoffs, you can play in a championship game, or you can play in the bowl game and it doesn't count. But we've got to be smart with, with the kids with only three games left. Right. You can't. You keep mentioning the bowl game, uh, one win away. Like, is that now part of sort of the general conversation you're having with this team? Maybe a motivational thing, like one more win and we're in a bowl? Well, uh, Adam, we've always been re really honest with them, and they're real smart, or they wouldn't have gotten in here, and they can count. <laughs> so they know. I mean, it's not, it's not hiding, but. I didn't um, mean to say they couldn't count. No, we, we are, um, we, we feel like we have a chance to win the last three games. And the way college football is, as crazy it is, we obviously have a chance to lose it. We could have won seven or nine as easy as we could have won five. And I put that on our coaches. I've told them that. I said, it, it's, that, that, that's it. Coaches can put it on players. Coaches are supposed to get the players motivated and ready to play. That, that's our jobs. So uh, we never put it back on the players. Uh, but 
we're planning on winning every one of them, and we're, we're planning on going to a bowl. So that's what we talk about. Mac, it's been over a month since you guys last played at Keenan Stadium, and your last home game was obviously a really difficult day for you, really difficult day for the program. Can you just put into words like how much better it feels in this building now when you guys are preparing to play Wake Forest versus you know just after Georgia Tech? Yeah, um, Michael, it's a great point. The, um, having a sickness is a real burden uh, on everybody. I mean, there's just pressure. And, and uh, all of us know th that have children, what your children mean to you. And then as a player, coach what the players mean to him. And, and Tylee got sick so fast, it just really got us all. Um, and we watched it. I mean, it was right in front of us every day and we could see him going down. And we didn't know if he'd make it till the end of the season, but there was a point there where we said, he's not gonna make it to the end of the season because it's just, it's going too fast. There's too many things that are shutting down. And then you, um, you, you have to manage it all. And, and, and football becomes very unimportant when you're talking about life and death of a, of a person. I mean, that's, it's, it, football is very important and we want to win. Uh, but it, it really puts things in, in the priority um, when you're talking about life and death. And, and I still, I, I feel so much for those families who have lost a child. Uh, I can't imagine, and I don't want to imagine, uh, losing a child. Uh, in fact, September's coming back to the game this weekend for the first time, and she's going to be there to see the things that have been done in his honor, which she will, I'm sure she'll be sad, and at the same time, she'll feel really good about it. Um, but the truth is, we haven't played well at home, and, and that's, we, we need to. And, and I want the fans to come out and help them get going here. We've got some great seniors that have given us some wonderful moments, uh, they got two more games in Kenan Stadium. So we want all the fans to come out and help them, but I've told the guys, you need to play better at home. And, and we played great on the road. Uh, so I don't know what that is, but, but it, it's time for us to, to pick it up and have a great performance at home, uh, under the lights, uh, on national TV, and, and it, it should be a fun challenge for us this weekend. Can so you September knew about the nutrition room name and knew about the field catch? She knew about all of that. Uh, in fact, they just put the plaque up next to the nutrition room today, which Jeremy, Jeremy will be releasing. They, did, they just put the, uh, they just sent us five minutes before we walked in here, the pictures uh, on the wall of, of the keep swinging and, and uh, Ty Lee Strong on both sides. And, and at, uh, uh, at Virginia and Florida State, every one of those kids touch it on the way out. So uh, it does matter to us. The logos look great. They're very classy and very well done. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it'll be a hard return for her, but a, a proud moment as well. And he's a senior, uh, so this is his last year for his legacy as well. So um, we're hoping she'll be at Senior Day, and 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 we can he can be honored at Senior Day uh, like he would be here. Can you put into words just how different everything is right <laughs> now as opposed to that last day that you were in here for a game? Yeah, it's, it's probably hard, uh, Andrew. I hadn't thought a lot about it, but um, grief pressure of, of how to handle someone that sick is different for all of us. I've never done that before. Um, we've never had a player that continually got worse on our team. I said we'd only lost one player at Texas, and, and it was a truck accident one night, and we got a call, so it's very different. It's still a loss, but it's very different than, than watching a young man get worse uh, every day. Um, and then you've got to, to make sure that you handle the family right and him right. And how much can the players see him? How much do they need to see him? He's exhausted and he's tired. Does he need him over there all the time? Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's all encompassing when you handle something like that. Um, and then the grief is different too. You know, it's, uh, it's absolutely changed the way I think about some things. And, um, and my life's better because of Tylee Kraft, 100%. Um, wish we had him longer, uh, but he taught me more things than I've been around people for 73 years have taught me. And he taught me more things in a, in a, a small moment. He taught me why well, pout after losses. You're not supposed to. Uh, we're talking about life and death here. After a loss, you're supposed to learn from your loss, correct it, and get better. I've been a guy that didn't handle losses. Well, heck, I'm part of the loss, so fix my problems and, and get better with it. So 
um, he, he taught you to have fun. We don't know how many days we've got. And from, can I follow up on that? And from a football perspective, you go from the 68 yard run after you guys have tied them. To, I would imagine from a football standpoint only, it feels a lot different around here as well. So it's not just the tie least stuff, it's everything appears to be different in this building now than it was that day. Yes, the, the, the team that we saw the last two weeks is the team that I saw in the spring, I see in practice, and the one I thought we would have all year. Now I can sit here for 45 minutes and go through all of the, the, the problems that this team has been faced with. Nobody cares. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You're supposed, still supposed to win all the games. Uh, but uh, we've all, uh, I've, I've, like I said, I've read a lot about life and death here in the last month or two. and. And they all talk about you, you learn more from storms than you do from sunshine. Uh, you go through storms to find a rainbow. Uh, you have to handle tough things to make your life better. Uh, and right now, this is a tough team. They've, they've had a bunch of stuff thrown at them. They've had negative talk. They've had people that have thrown them out. Uh, they've lost a player. They've had players sick and hurt. Um, they, they're on their third quarterback who now is playing as, as well as most quarterbacks in the country. Um, so they're, they, they've taken uh, every negative thing that's happened to them and over the last two weeks turned it into a positive and nearly beat Georgia Tech even on that day where they thought they might lose their player. So I'm, I'm really impressed with this team. I'm impressed with the coaches have handled it. They've been positive. They've been upbeat. They've had energy. Uh, and that's why I'm very excited about watching us play the last three weeks. Now, to get back on the, the topic of uh, roster management real quick, uh, you mentioned obviously having a, you know, starting to create a, a bowl game depth chart and talking to different guys. I remember last year you mentioned having a spring practice depth chart that was towards the end. How do you kind of, in these last three games, balance trying to, of course, run the table, win the last three, and then also kind of coaching for the future and trying to manage, like, what you're going to have next year? Like, how do you kind of separate those two? Yeah. If that makes sense. It's, it's a very good question. The, uh, the answer would be off week, by week, it's not off, by week is a week where you can do that. We go back to work now. We're, we're totally into the next three games only. But you, you had a moment there where you could separate yourself from the last three games and um, bowl game and spring practice and portal and start looking at that. And Pat Suttis does as good a job of anybody in the country of saying, here are your numbers, defensive line, here's what you're losing, here's what you've got to replace. And, and then when people start going into the portal, we'll have a recruiting board and, and that board will be up immediately and the coaches will be looking at it and contacting those players. So it all happens really fast. And that's why you needed to address it in a bye week because you get to the state game I mean, portal opens uh, the 9th of December. It's going to be here. I mean, it is on you. So you can't be sitting around saying, what do we need? What are we thinking about? Uh, you've got to do it now. Hey, Vince, how has coaching changed from the last two years to now for you and what you've noticed about your style, about the message? Because the last two years, you guys had six wins by mid-October, end of October. Versus now, you're trying to just get to that point and get that one over the lead, if not more. I think coaching is, uh, it, it's always been multitasking, but it's probably more that way now than ever before because you, you, you never know who's going to show up for games. I was sitting there with some friends in the, afternoon, uh, the, the morning uh, at, at Florida State because I got a lot of guys I played with and friends that are there and then we had some top boosters here that, that I was standing around and, and they said, uh, you look confident, you, you look I said, they said, what do you think? I said, I think I've got no clue. <laughs> I don't have any idea who's gonna show up. There's, there's 80 of them. And if 40 show up, we'll get beat. Hopefully 65 show up. You'd love to have 80 show up and play their best, but uh, uh, you're just handling more stuff now. You're, you're, um, um, media is more aggressive than ever before with sports. Somebody's fired every day. Uh, and then they're not the next week, and then they're fired again, and, and it's just who we are with social media. Um, and then uh, players, you're, you're having players decide, I'm going to redshirt or I'm transferring. You're having some guys get in the portal early season, mid-season. 
uh, we've been really fortunate here. We haven't had much of that, uh, but you're, you're just having to, to take whatever's thrown at you that day and fix it. Is there a balance? Because I know last year, obviously, Drake May being such a top prospect, quarterback plays every single play. With Amari Hampton, like you said, being in your eyes a top prospect for the NFL, is there a balance between trying to give him as much time to shine in these final three games where it's guaranteed versus maybe playing him to the best of the chances to give you guys a chance to win those games? Does that make any sense? Yes, but both are important for us. Uh, you'd like for him to win the Doak Walker Award. You'd like for him to get in the Heisman race. Uh, he's a, a phenomenal player. He's one of the best players in the country. Uh, but our first focus for all of them is to win the game, period. And, and that's what we do. Like we said, um, Davion Goss has helped rest him some. Uh, we thought that Barlow, we brought him in as a transfer to help with those carries. You can see he looked great when he went in there Saturday. Uh, we just had, he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. So hopefully we'll get him back for the last couple of games. Uh, but you, everything we do is to try first to win the game. And, and then we look at everything else. And that's what we've told the players that we talked about redshirting. Um, if we need you to win a game, then we're gonna play you. So understand that. But if we can redshirt you and it not hurt our chances to win, then we will redshirt you. Go ahead, wait, wait. go ahead. When you first got here and compared to now, when you talk about your portal board of all the, you know, the guys you're looking at, I mean, how big is it now compared to where you were, and how big is it in terms of numbers? Yeah, it's interesting that there's a lot more talk about portal now than there is recruiting. Right. Mm -hmm. It's changed that much. We didn't have a portal, you know, and, and uh, you're thinking about, you're looking at guys now that are transferring like the quarterback at Wake. This is his third school. And we fought our guts out to get Tez to play at a third school. He didn't even play at the first one. And, and, and now here we are, we got guys that are in their fifth school. Uh, so it's, it's just changed so much, Chip, and it, it continues to change daily. We have, uh, we tell our coaches to stay off social media and don't worry about what's happening in, in the lawsuits and the revenue sharing and Pat will handle all that. And then he gives us an update in the staff meetings, I'll say, Pat, tell guys what they need to know and tell them facts because a lot of the stuff's a rumor or this may happen or that may happen, they need to coach. But when he says, this is going to happen, this is 90% chance it's gonna happen, so we've gotta prepare for this. And we've gotta look at revenue sharing and what does that mean and, and how does that, ha how much money do you get? Uh, how do you distribute the money to the players at your position? Coaches are gonna to have to do a better job of evaluation than ever before. Because recruiting is gonna become more about evaluation uh, than it is recruiting. Because you gotta figure out who you want and then you gotta pay them. And that, that's going to be a huge part of, of recruiting moving forward. You ever think you need a general manager? No, <laughs> no. And, and, and the same with, with guys on your team, you're gonna to have to start deciding who gets paid more because it's going to be salary caps and you can't pay them all the same. So you're actually going to have to say this safety is going to get this much money. So this safety is going to get less. And I'm sorry, but if you don't like it transfer because that's just the way we feel. So not only are you going to have to do a better job of evaluating before they get here, you're going to have to do a great job of evaluating who you got. And then you're going to have to develop who you've got. And even in the portal, just having money is not going to be the answer. You've got to have money. You've got to make the right decisions in the portal, and then you've got to spend your money properly. Or you're wasting money. Matt, do you? Um, to, or, excuse me. Adam, was next? Then we'll get, I'll jump in after you. You're still talking about age? <laughs> so, what's the I mean, these, these are the other things. Well, you let me go, because I might think it's... Yeah, <laughs> I defer you all. Adam's in a great Well, mood. and let you go because I might forget that you wanted to go. So, um, with old people. I'd like to ask you about the arc of the season. And obviously, Tyler's a big part of it. But you uh, start the season with a lot of hope. You know, you win the first three. Uh, you give up 70 points to JMU. You talked about winning after the game. So, that triggered a lot of chat. So, 
Yeah. Same, same. Uh, can you talk about that? Have you ever had a season that has a, that kind of an arc? Right? Like, no, I can't ever remember a season that, that's even near like this with all the stuff we've had thrown at us. And at the same time, my job as their leader is to handle it all. And, and um, we didn't even play great against Charlotte and, and uh, Central. I mean, very honestly, we won. We, we blew, blew both of them out late, but we didn't play great. Um, so, and, and we stunk against um, James Madison on defense. We scored 50 points. Had 500 and something yards on offense, but we had eight turnovers or something. So it was one of those games like Notre Dame and Northern Illinois. Why do they happen? I don't know. They're, 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 you don't win the last three games or something happens that um, the fan base doesn't like that there'll be a lot of chatter will be resurface. If we don't play good and win Saturday night, there'll be bad chatter. <laughs> I mean, that's the way college football is. Art. But I don't worry about that. I worry about winning. And my total focus is on winning the last three games, starting with this weekend, and then having the best record that we've ever had. And, that, and, and winning a bowl game for the first time in a while, and winning nine games. That, that's my, my total focus right now, which is what I said before the season. We didn't have much chatter. We weren't supposed to be any good. Nobody even considered us being in the top 25. And then we beat Minnesota, and everybody said, hmm, well, this is a little better than I thought. And then we win two more, and they were okay. And then we got blown out, and they said, ah, they're awful. So that we'll drop them. And that's just what happens in, in our world, modern day. Uh, but, but I have to be the one that, that keeps trying to push to do the positive, not the one that, that dies and, and, and lives on every moment of every play because these are kids, and they have real lives, and they got mental health, and they, they got school, and and I'm responsible for them. So if I can't stay strong and positive, then I'm not doing my job. Well, it's, it's obviously a great opportunity for you considering what's coming forward. It's a great opportunity. I'm so proud of these kids. I'm proud of these coaches. That's why I want the fans to do the same. Uh, we're supposed to, to be in the present. and We're supposed to always try to be forward thinking. Uh, let's be in the present with this team and let's reward them for their last two weeks and the staff. Let's have a great environment Saturday night. Let's go play three great games and end up with a, a real positive season. That, that's my focus on the whole thing. Thank you. May I go now? Yes, unless anybody older has got anything else. <laughs> I was trying to think of a question. Yeah. Tommy, I mean, is a Tommy, are you? Mm -hmm. I prefer to the other people. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back to the, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the defensive line you call the dominant um, physical. I mean, it is 17 sacks the last two games for this group up front. Um, watching it, you know, it feels like along with the way they're playing, there's like a confidence and also a chemistry. Like when you get Bo in there on those, you know, the psycho packages, like, you know, the, the buttons to press, I guess, that Jeff is doing. Like what do you see, what stands out to you? Maybe not X's and O's, but what just stands out to you about the way they're playing in this sort of groove, you know, that they found? Yeah. Uh one thing, Adam, would be that uh, came on Rutgers back. He's one of the best players in the country. Sure. And you, you can't just take one of the best players in the country out and be as good. And, and he's, uh, he affects everybody. He's a leader. He's, he's uh, got really strong faith. Um, he's, he's such a dominating player that they have to put two people on him. And he affects the run and the pass. And when you put he and, and Bo and you don't even have to take uh, um, Rucker, uh, Richie out um, because he's a tackle, but he's so athletic that, that he can stay in there. Uh, and then you got Des Evans. So you got four of the best pass rushers in the country that are in there. So the, the chemistry is good and they feel good. Uh, the other thing I, I feel is that we're fresh. We're fresher than we've been this time of the year. We're healthier because we're fresher. We've been playing too deep in that front line the, the entire year, and now our, our legs are fresh. So it's not like, uh, gosh, we, we got two or three people banged up at the end of the year and they didn't get to play in the defensive line here the last couple of years, and that's really <laughs> affected us. So, so that's a factor. And I also believe that as a play caller, you've got to get comfortable with your quarterback. And Chip's really getting comfortable with his quarterback. 
because he and Jacoby now are on the same page in there, so we know who we are. Defensively, the same thing. Jeff Collins has got to figure out who we are. And he's got to figure out, is there a corner I need to cover? Is, is there, do I have to do this to run this defense to cover that one? I think right now he's comfortable. When you get that much pressure on the passer and you stop the run, turn them loose, man, let them go. Yeah. And, and we're simpler and we're playing more free and they're having more fun. They look like that confidence. You, you can't have fun without confidence. And they weren't having fun during that stretch that Art was talking about. And we weren't doing the things we said we were going to do. And, and I've said, uh, why don't, when I stand up here every Monday and say we're going to stop the run, I said, would somebody please stop the run? <laughs> I said, I'm really tired of telling everybody we're going to stop the run, then they rush for 300 yards. <laughs> so I said, if, if put 11 up there on the line of scrimmage. If they throw for 500 yards, I'm fine. But stop the run. I am really tired of lying to our fans. And I said, so I want the run stopped. So we are, for two weeks, we have stopped the run. That's harder with Wake Forest because of the design of their offense. Right. It's really unique what they do. But, uh, but I think a lot of times coaches are too smart. They work so hard to put so much in to stop everything. And then we don't stop anything. You got to be great at something. And, and, uh, I, I said it a month ago, but there's more distractions for kids right now than ever before. So it's harder for them to lock in on what you're teaching them because they got so much stuff going on. We got agents talking to them now. We got third parties. We got parents talking about transferring. We got guys talking about pros. Um, you got social media at a higher level. I'll walk up there for lunch in a minute and every one of them will be sitting at the table reading something. And I usually walk up and say, what are you looking at? And they'll go. <laughs> so. Can't do that these days. No. No. But, but it's, and then they got all the things we all had. They got girlfriends. They got family issues. They've got school. They got sickness. They got, I mean, so uh, we're at an all-time high for distractions. And that's what I worry about our young people. That I, I worry about more depression because they got more on them. They can see the child that died in, in Iraq, and they can see the child that died in, in, in uh, New Jersey. We didn't have all that. We just had our stuff. So there's more mental pressure on kids than ever before, and I think coaches moving forward are going to have to be simpler and be great at what you're doing than ever before because kids don't have as much time in, in their minds to, to do all the stuff the coaches do. Coaches are over here all day, every day, and, and they can start thinking about too much, and God, this looks great, and this looks good, and I have to be careful. I'll see a great play somewhere, and I'll send it to them while I'm telling them to be more simple. Right. And they look at me like, did you just send us this? I said, yeah, this, that's just my ADD. He said it, you got time for one more. Okay, well, I won't take it then. Do you, do you find that when you're making, as you start to make these, I guess, Approaches to recruit some kids, and a portal and using money to recruit someone. Do you find that kids are mature enough to understand sometimes, or is this even something they consider getting money versus having the ability to maybe become a pro or become a big time player? Like, hey, this might fit me more, but I'm not getting as much money versus the school that's offering me a lot more, but I might not shine as much in the spotlight. Those are all good questions. It depends on the family. You know, some families just need the money. Some families are saying, he may not be a pro player, so I better get my money now. So it, it's, uh, but, but money is a bigger factor than ever before. And as I see it, pro baseball, you can pay whatever you want. Pro football, there is a, a, a plan and a salary cap and a scale. Right now, we're pro baseball when it comes to paying. And until we can get back to pro football, uh, the ones with the most money are going to have the best players. Just period. It's it's 100% that way. Uh, even with the um, with the revenue sharing, if people have a, a balance of money, that will help those that haven't had as much money. But still, the way I understand it, the collective is going to be able to go get as much money outside as they are now. So it's still not going to solve the problems. It'll just make it where those that had less money will have more 
but the ones that have all the money will still have more than, than everybody else. Does, so what that, does that make any sense? Yeah. <laughs> does that? So what you're saying is like in baseball, for example, they have the cross the board revenue sharing, then each team has its own local contracts with radio and TV, like the Yankees make a lot more than the Royals. So that's kind of what you're saying college football is going to be like. It is. Right now, it is. The ones with the most money that can pay the, the most are the ones that are going to get the best players. But with the revenue sharing, it's going to go up for everybody, but there's that's still outside entity. That's right. The, depend on your university and your athletics department. They will decide what part of that, quote, 20-something million is going to go to football. And they'll, they, there is not a, a, a decision that each school has to be equal. It's going to be decided by each university, period. And then the way I understand it, the reason the lawsuit was in there is the, the NCAA was saying, so let's do away with collectives and, and let's just have the revenue sharing. So it'll be fair. And other people, judges said, we can't do that. So you're still gonna have a collective that can still give another $2 million to a player outside of the revenue sharing um, as it stands right now. Sounds fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds great. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess the reason I asked that is because, you know, theoretically, without knowing how much Mario makes when using NIO and collectives, I mean, theoretically, he could have gone somewhere else for more money, but he might play better and fit into the scheme here more, obviously. That's, so I guess that's why I asked. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a good point. But again, it, it depends on the family and yeah. on the kid. And the background. Yeah. Omarion and Cayman made a decision they wanted to be here. Yeah. And and, and it's worked out for both of them. But so that does happen 95% of the kids. That's right. Like the solitary Ray, staying here, obviously, versus going yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you all. Thank you.